Welcome to part two of Season of the Witch, where I create a witch's costume based on each of the seasons of the year over the course of the year. If you haven't seen part one, it's up here somewhere, and it is spring. I'll explain that later. I am so excited for this one. It took me a little while to really kind of finalize the design, but I ended up making a collage on Pinterest. And if I haven't figured out how to make that collage look pretty, I'll just put the inspo pictures up here. Let's talk about the design. I really, like roll all my words together, don't I? I can't enunciate anything. Let's go talk about the design. Here is my design. I'm not sure if this is a dress or a skirt and a top yet. We'll figure that out. It's heavily inspired by this dress here by Hassadris. I'm probably butchering that. I'm going for more of a druid spring witch vibe with this one. Still no traditional witch's hat. It's coming, okay? I will do a traditional witch's hat at one point, okay? To break down the plan, which will change a bit as we go on this journey, we have a dress slash top and skirt with a wrap style bodice. I'm imagining a bunch of lacing at the back, a cape connected at my wrists or elbows, long flowy hair, a mossy crown, a flower blindfold, pauldrons, spoiler I don't make those. I'm also obsessed with this image of twigs growing out of fingers so we're gonna try that and also I found a super cool stick while I was out walking yesterday so if I can find a saw I'm gonna make a druid staff. I don't know if druids use staffs but you know like the vibe. Full disclosure I spent $125 on a wig for this so I'm out of money. Here is what I have in cash. So basically to do this project I'm giving myself $30 cash and whatever I can scrounge from around the house in the garden. I'm going to attempt to use some real leaves. I only really hung these up to dry the day before filming. I think they need weeks. I don't have weeks, so I'm going to just try and paint them with Mod Podge. So we have our inspo, we have our plan. Let's scrounge for materials. Starting with the fabric stash, although I'm a little scared to go there because I did see at least one spider that I brought in on those leaves that I'm drying there, and now I have to go near them. Let's get to scrounging. Nice. Yeah, no. Ah! I'd like it to be longer. Maybe pile. Ooh, moss. I have scrounged. Now let's go through the materials. This fabric's taking up a lot of space. This is a torn bamboo bed sheet that my brother gave me and he was like, I feel like you could do something with this. And I knew straight away that this was going to be my spring witch color. Foam clay and armature wire for building our crown and our pauldrons. In terms of the cape fabric, we've got either this leftover chul from my wedding dress or this really lovely silk mesh that I got. Cheap for silk, pricey for regular fabric. This could do with being dyed green, I think. Some of the dry flower arrangements that just live in my house. So I figure we can harvest these a bit. So this box of flowers was actually the nicest flowers that I bought for my thousand flowers dress. And it didn't arrive. At least they finally arrived months later. I have some leftover moss from when I made that house there. I also have here, I'm just gonna, I don't feel very professional right now. That's the skirt from the winter, which has got some gauze fabric that's just haphazardly attached to it. So I'm going to harvest some of this to make our blindfold. Why am I sitting like this? Oh, I've been sitting so weird this whole time. Is that better? Now that we get to it, I actually don't know where to start. I'm gonna start with harvesting some of this gauze for our mask. We just have to start, all right? We just gotta, we just gotta get going. All right, we'll do like a, not even kidding, I already can barely see. So putting flowers on this, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty hard to see. Good stuff. I might wanna think about dyeing. Oh, now that I just, okay, okay. I just realized that this is white and if the fabric that I'm gonna be putting over the top is the silk, that is off-white and maybe I should have used the silk to make the mask as well. Gosh darn it. I already cut it off though. We're not gonna be wasteful. We're gonna be super frugal, okay? That is nicer. Oh, uh, okay, well, I feel silly. This is fine if we use the tulle. I think that in order to decide which fabric is going over the top of the dress and what's gonna work with the cape, I think I'm gonna need to drape the dress. Ew! Oh, I broke a thumb! We should probably have a look at how much fabric we actually have. Oh, wow, that is quite the tear. All right, hang on, it just kept ripping. I don't want it to be bulky here. Like I'd prefer that it was kind of smoother at the top. So we'll see. Let's do some pinning. Let's figure it out. I didn't bring any pins. Oi, stay on. Hey, that's good. It's gonna make sense, I, I promise. All right, and I think we do some pleating around the hips. Literally just said I want it to be smooth on the hips. I don't know, I don't think I'm liking the pleats. 
I'm definitely not liking the pleats. So what I'm picturing is something like that. Oh, that's gonna be very full. Oh, I'm not feeling good about this. Don't panic. Let's just leave the skirt for now and let's focus on the top. Uh. I started out by pinning pleats into the top like on the original dress. I'll tell you what, while my neighbors are tending to their bins, I'm gonna get a piece of cake. That's definitely undercooked. But the pleats were really bulky, so I trimmed it down and redid it with way less fabric and it looked a lot better. That's gonna be good, okay. So if we'll make this panel, like this little pleated thing, and then, and then, we run a strap along it that like somehow ties with the skirt all together? Somehow? Oh, it's giving priestess. Sorry, Alfie, that was really loud, wasn't it? I made a very loud clack. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to wake you up. Maybe what we do is we connect here to here to hold the skirt up. I don't know if this is gonna work. Basically, I've just completely ripped off that dress from Pinterest. Yeah, I don't have original thoughts of my own. I don't know what to do about the sides now. I like this being smooth here. I think I want some pleats, but I don't know that I want that much pleating. I think I'll cut up this entire thing here to make straps. Let's do that now. Let's get that part done. Let's pin the skirt in place, see how how we feel about it, maybe get into construction. It cannot be that easy. It's gonna hang weird. I just, I know it. So let's just, let's just find out how weird it hangs. I am back from our walk. I had to change into something with a little bit more sun protection and pockets. Look what I picked up. Hopefully there aren't too many bugs on it. I have an idea, let's go. So the idea was godets, but I always confuse those with gauze. So that's what I'm gonna call them. Change now these shorts, I don't feel comfy. I might actually just explain this with an illustration. Basically, I took our skirt panels and cut a triangle into the center back, sewed those two triangles together, then flip it the other way around and sew it back in to remove fabric from the waist and add it to the hem. And because I had some scraps, I made extra baby godets to add even more fullness. It's gonna be good. Ow, there's a pin in there and I squeezed it. Aha, and that's a gore. Look, here's the thing. This is all going to be messy as all heck. It's a costume. I'm not really gonna worry too much about things like seam finishing. And I feel like I'm very close to you. Oh, that's worse. It's a really fun way to get creative with sewing without it being serious. And I highly recommend that every now and then do some sewing or some whatever your crafting is, but in a really light way. And then you can tackle the bigger things. Like, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm pretty out of breath. It's very warm today. Uh, I'm gonna get to sewing some gauze and I'm gonna stop talking about how much I love sewing, but I love sewing. Okay. All right, so just for each of these gauze, I'm gonna sew them along the straight-ish line, I say, ish and then that's going to be our little panel that's going to go into the center back and then the other ones are these small ones that are lying around here but yeah they're all going to be the same so let's sew them and by the same i mean they're going to be wildly unequal and messy but it's fine look at the skirt this looks a million times better than just a pleated rectangle i'm so happy with it created a train with the gauze coming out Hello, hi. I haven't decided on the pleats yet. I've done one there and on this side I've done two. So I'm gonna see how it looks, how I feel about it tomorrow. But that is where we are leaving it. I'm gonna have some couch time. I think I'm gonna watch Agatha all along. Maybe I'll watch something witchy, get, get into the spirit of it. So I got distracted by the wind. I'll see you tomorrow morning. We're gonna go get fabric dye and I think we're gonna basically try and sew this dress together. Great work team, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Good morning. You might not be able to hear me. I'll put the I'll put the phone closer. That might help. I am here at Kmart. I am going to get some nail adhesives and there was something else, top coat, I think. And I'm gonna really try to not get distracted by the candles and mugs. I'm gonna be focused. And then we're off to Spotlight to go and get fabric dye. We have a problem. Hello in there. That's the one I want. I'll tell you what though, that's a really nice green. Sorry, I can mix it to be that color. I can save $2.50. Let's get a gloss top coat. I'll change my mind. I really like this color. I'm getting it. Oh wait, it's the wrong part. <laughs> oh, look at that. That would be perfect, wouldn't it? Except $18, $18, no way. All purpose to not use on synthetics.
Yes, they vary in size, but I've got some fabric swatches here. I didn't want to cut off too much of the silk. So the fabric dye that I bought, it said when I looked it up online that it was all purpose works for synthetics and natural fibers. And I was like, amazing. You never see that. Yeah, because it's a lie. It's not. It says it works on nylon, but not polyester. I don't know what this is. We're going to try a little tester on the silk and on the tulle and see which one takes to the fabric dye. Let's go to my kitchen. Don't look at how messy it is. All right, just ignore it. All right. Also, the measurements are in gallons. I have no way of measuring gallons. So we're just gonna completely guess. Oh, that instantly looks black. Oh, it's very green. A little dip. It's kind of green. Let's see if this does anything. The chill took to the color quite well, I think. But uh, most importantly, I think that the heat from the dye bath has <laughs> damaged the, the silk. I do not think that this should go in hot water. So we're gonna go with the chill rather than just destroy a whole bunch of silk. You were supposed to use gloves. Ah! All right, well, it should hopefully come out a pretty light green. It's a very apple-y green. I don't know why it's not the color it said it would be. Yeah, that's not great. It's all right, I wanted green nails. I'm trying this thing lately where, if possible, I am sewing it, then ironing it. It does not create as nice results, but it's a hell of a lot easier doing things the chill way when it's a costume, when it's for wearable stuff. No chill, zero chill. Am I using that right? I actually don't know what it means. Yeah, I've recently found that when doing tape like this, it's much quicker and easier to just fold it as I sew it rather than ironing and pinning it in place first. All right, we have two sets of ties. The other update is I hate that color. That is not a similar color to that. I am going to try and hand wash that one and see if I can't get a good chunk of that color out and then it can just be a pale green, possibly. Good news is that uh, washing the fabric got the dye off of my hands. Bad news is, is that it barely got it off of the fabric. Anyway, I'm gonna have some lunch, then I'm gonna get to attempting to secure some of this. I don't know how this is gonna work. It's one thing pinning it onto a mannequin and being like, oh, it's a pretty dress. And it's a whole other thing, turning it into a functional dress that you can get in and out of and that will actually stay there without it being pinned to you. It's such a pretty shape. So we have to figure out how we can make it wearable. Let's get to some hand sewing. All right, I have done some tacking stitches all along here. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off of here, machine stitch to properly secure it all along here and here. And I think I might put my loops in now and possibly a boning channel, I don't know. But yeah, we'll try and turn this up here into some loops and then we might have a top, maybe, maybe. And then we're gonna figure out this situation. Done it on this one, so that's what I'll from the outside, and that's the inside. We'll cover up the raw edge. Don't worry about all the other raw edges, it's fine. It's costume. I did put some zip tie boning in to help hold the shape, and I was really struggling with getting this top to sit right until I sewed the two pieces together and it could stop fighting itself. Sitting good. All right, great. This one here, I have just realized. In yet another fine example of just because you pinned it there doesn't mean that's how it will sit on a dress. This is straight. The thread that will attach it here is curved, which means this will curve also. This is my horsehair canvas. I'm going to attach it to that. This will hopefully keep it straight. I think I'm going to attach this string to here at the back, loop it up through there, and then have that attached to here. <laughs> That'll do. For the main part of the skirt, I trimmed the top to hopefully retain that shape and attached a very basic waistband to it. <sighs> oh my God, okay. So miraculously, this kind of works even though I used a straight waistband. I didn't curve the shape of it at all. Really should have, it's fine. Okay, and then additionally, I tried on the rest of the kit together. It works somehow. I don't understand, but it works. So tomorrow, all I have to do for the dress is I'm going to just secure the other side of this waistband, put in a couple of closures and attachments so that everything actually fits together. And we got a dress. In the meantime, look at how green this is. This is so bright. Look at it. This looks like it's for its child's tutu. I'm gonna give this a soak and see if I can't drain some of this color out. And other than that, I will see you tomorrow. And the reason I'm not working tonight is because Thomas and I are gonna get pizza and play Diablo 4 because there's a new DLC and we're having a very good time. Okay, bye. Good morning. 
Soaking the fabric in nappy sand didn't do it. This is looking so much mintier on camera, but I trust me, this is apple green. And as you can see, not much green has faded out. Mm, not good. I'm gonna try and kind of muddy the green a bit. I have put it in a pot with a whole bunch of tea and coffee. Whoops. Oh, that was a really bad idea. I'll show you when it's not hot anymore. So I'm gonna leave it for a couple of hours to soak and fingers crossed some of that color stays in there. So for now, we're gonna do some finishing touches on this one and then we get to move on to, I'm thinking the crown next. And if we're very lucky and we work very hard, maybe the mask, but that's really a tall order. And I don't know why I tell you what I'm planning on doing for the day because I almost never achieve it. The waistband was sitting a bit weird. So to improve that, I just made it thinner so it could curve easier. Then when I sewed it in place, I did that thing where I turn off the camera or I meant to turn it on. So we have this. Then I stitched a cover onto that horsehair cam to make it less scratchy and it turns out I lied when I said I was adding closures I just use safety pins for the skirt uh I think that the coffee bag broke in there so yeah you should really take the coffee and tea bags out before putting the fabric in I tried rinsing the coffee grounds off but I think I just moved them to other parts of the tool so I figured it would be easier to remove once the tool was dry so my new wig arrived oh, I kind of really miss my long hair now so the reason I am wearing the hat with it it's too big. It didn't occur to me that wigs come in sizes and this particular style is a medium and I have a tiny head. There's a lot of uh, extra space. It's real itchy. I'm gonna put the hat back on because I feel a little silly with it. Nice. I feel so Halloween-y. Yeah, I'm gonna get extensions. I just want, I want long curly full hair so that I look like a witch. That's, that's my goal in life. Oh, and that's why we're here. So let's get to it. Oh, my hair is gonna be ruined from wearing that. I need to look at my, I've just got a random leaf sitting here. I need to look at my reference image. So it turns out that the crown is made by someone on YouTube called Scribblebug. Hope I can do it justice. Hers is also symmetrical, which I don't think mine will be. My crown ended up being pretty much a direct copy of Scribblebug's design. Shout out to her for being way more creative than me. It's such a cute design and I actually just couldn't think of any way to improve it. I'm pretty happy with that as like our base. So now I'm gonna to attempt to attach the other side and then replicate it. Oh, that's gonna suck. I've really messed up this wig already. Do I need a wig brush? Anyone who owns a wig, do you need to brush it with a wig brush or is that just like a made up add on that they try and sell you? I now own two wigs. Can I just use a regular brush? At the moment, I'm just using my fingers. This is the first time I've made a crown like this and wow, it is so much easier when you can tape your wire together because it's being covered in foam clay. The foam clay was a little difficult to work with initially trying to wrap it around the wire without being too bulky, but I kind of figured it out in the end. Once I covered the wire enough, I twisted the ends of the foam clay and carved some wood texture lines into it. I don't even have a segue here, but I'm jumping straight into it regardless. I've noticed that for small YouTube channels, we basically have one shot to get your attention. A few times I've wanted to click on a video by a new creator and I've accidentally refreshed the page and that video is poof, gone forever. Even if you like and comment on a video, unless you subscribe, you're probably never going to see that YouTuber again. And that would be sad. Honestly, I don't understand YouTube's algorithm at all. It is a wild beast. So help me fight it by liking and subscribing if you haven't. Thank you, I love you forever, bye. I don't know what's happened to the lighting. I didn't turn the lighting on, that's why. That's what's happening. You know what, I'll fix it. Ow, oh my God. I just touched my light and I got a massive shock from the static electricity. It's a big one. I'd love to know if the mic picked it up. Ow! It's, it's really not symmetrical, but I am so happy with how it's looking at the moment. So I will let that dry overnight. And then tomorrow I am going to flip it around the other way and do all the other bits. I'll see you tomorrow for more crown and mask time. Good morning. This morning I flipped the crown over and just did the last bits of foam clay that needed to be done. So that one is drying right there. I forgot to tell you, but I pulled the fabric off the line yesterday and just being out in the wind got most of the coffee grounds out. So again, I'm not sure how much this color is gonna translate on camera. It's looking way better. I tried to do a little bit of a dip dye and we kind of got a dip dye. I am way happier with it now. And any little bits of tea and coffee that are stuck in there, it's dirt. She's a spring witch, it's fine. So where that leaves us this morning is I'm about to make this one of the hardest photo shoots I have ever done because turns out blindfolds stop you from seeing. I thought cause it was gauze that I'd be able to see through it. As soon as it's on tight, it shuts my eyes. I mean, actually that's all right. That's not too bad. All right, let's just have a little look at how that is on my face. If they're just gonna fall down, like it looks like they're going to. I can't see what it looks like. Feels floppy, but it doesn't feel good. Yeah, that was looking terrible. So I took the big flowers off and I went with a mix of faux and dried flowers for the blindfold. There really isn't much to it other than sewing them in a somewhat pleasing arrangement. 
Then at some point I remembered that embroidery hoops are a thing and very helpful. Oh, and the only way to see what it looked like was to film myself and then review the footage after. I feel like I like that size and length, you know, as opposed to the eucalyptus size, which is gonna be rather chonkers. In an attempt to preserve the leaves and stems, I coated them with Mod Podge and then I got started on the nails with my other hand. Maybe what we do is we get a false nail, we put one of these sticks on the end of it that has our little Mod Podge leaves, and then we just blend the nail into the twig with foam clay. I'm starting to think that there is very little that foam clay can't do. I'm sure something like an epoxy sculpt would have worked great too, but foam clay is cheap and these are super temporary thanks to those natural leaves I used. Also, can I just say, if you're not watching Agatha all along, what are you doing? With the combo of watching that and making this witch costume, I swear I am this close to buying a deck of tarot cards and dyeing my hair black. Oh, I like these a lot. Isn't that cute? Next was onto the cape, which I think I failed to mention was actually a discarded circle skirt from my wedding dress, so it was a pretty particular shape we were working with. All right, I have done my best to iron this. It's looking a lot better. It's not as smooth as I would like it to be, but you know, it's something. The color, when they're together, I'm not too mad at. I think I have figured out how I'm gonna put this cape on as well, because remember, it's just a massive circle skirt. I will show you what we're working with. So the back of it will drop down like that. So we get this like drapingness at the bottom. Close it up there. So have it draping at the front, but then also attach under here to my elbow. So we might leave it hanging down like that, or we might put it on my elbow, we'll figure it out. And speaking of figuring it out, I think we'll figure it out tomorrow. Okay, bye. Good morning. What have I done with my camera angle? This feels very weird. Oh, there's a spider on the lens. Hi, buddy. Why is this the spot? Please leave. Oh, he looks like one that can jump too. I think it's a jumping spider. Get onto the, no, no, come on. I know you're scared. Come on, get onto the cardboard. He jumped, jump outside, go on, go on. You can do it. Okay, off you go, go on. Be outside. I want that bit of cardboard back. All right, I'll go get another one. He can just keep that. All right, I have a new piece of cardboard and I'm gonna fix this camera angle and stop sitting on my phone. Oh, and of course a massive blowfly came in. <gasps> Two flies, are you kidding? <gasps> one of them's a bee. I know I'm doing a spring witch look, but could nature like stay outside for a bit? I don't want all the bugs. I think what I'm gonna start with today is um, I want to paint this one. I Mod Podged it last night and Mod Podged the nails. We're gonna paint this one brown and we're also gonna paint the nails brown. And then while those are drying, I wanna get to work on finishing up that cape and making the parts that will attach it to my arms. I initially wanted to paint the crown a gray brown to help it stand out from the wig, but then I kind of forgot about that and just went for a color I liked. This actually took so long because of all of the nooks and crannies, and every time I looked at it from another angle, there were more patches that I missed. Next, I painted the nails with a color that would match the twigs, making sure to paint underneath. Honestly, I am kind of obsessed with these twig nails. Then I added some highlights, but I'm pretty sure you can't see that at all, so I don't know why I bothered. I did a second coat on the crown because I felt like it really needed it, but once again, I don't know if you can even tell that I'm doing anything. Honestly, there was just so much painting. Then I covered the twig nails in a top coat and it made them so shiny and lovely. The most random stuff in here, there's just some magnets. Hello, welcome to the afternoon. It's now the afternoon, been a weird day. My brother stopped by, so things kind of got a little bit derailed for the day. What was the other thing? Oh, and I didn't eat lunch because I was still full from breakfast. Very, very weird for me to not eat lunch. And so now I'm really snacky and I want dinner. So we're having chocolate. What do you think is gonna be more annoying? PVA or hot glue? I was about to Google, does it dry clear? It dries clear, that's the only thing it says. We're at the point where it is time to glue some moss onto my crown. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go with PVA because I'm so bad at hot glue. We've got our loose grass style and then our little grabby moss style. Ah, oh my God, I keep getting zapped. I thought it was the Crocs, but I'm not wearing them. Maybe it's, <gasps> it's my chair. Can you hear it? Good to know. We might mod podge some more leaves to also attach onto here, because I think that can look cool. Get my little moss bros out. Glob on there. I know you just saw me focusing with my mouth open, but I swear to God, I breathe out of my nose. I don't know why my mouth opens when I'm thinking. It's also when I'm sleeping, actually. I'm so scared this is gonna be in my eyes and my lungs and everything. Oh, it looks so foresty, I love it. Okay, the, the tweezers aren't helping, the glue is just sticking to the tweezers. Man, what a good time this is. I'm so glad that I saw that picture. I'm gonna attempt to just glue some leaves on. 
Worst case, they fall off. And to be honest, PVA probably isn't the thing for that, but it's sticking to my finger. The update is the leaf broke. No, that's not working, it's not working. Guys, it's not working, everybody. It's not working. Mm. I will stop touching it. The little leaves are probably all gonna fall off, but they add a little bit more greenery. All right, I'm gonna call that down on, down on the crown. <laughs> No, I'm gonna call that done on the crown. Down on the crown. What does that mean, everyone? I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna tidy all this mess up because there is paint and crap everywhere. And I want to get that cape sorted. And then I'm probably gonna go make dinner because I'm so hungry. Oh, and good news, I did eventually get to Kmart. They eventually filled out my click and collect order for one packet of nail adhesives. So silly. Let's go. Ugh. What is PVA glue? Polyvinyl. Acetate? Hey. Home assistant. What is PVA glue? According to Wikipedia, polyvinyl acetate, commonly known- Is that what I said? Or Elmer's glue in the US. Oh, you guys call it Elmer's glue in the US. Amazing. All right, I'm gonna get to tidy. I don't know, I said that like it was gonna be some exciting thing that you were gonna watch. You're not, I'm- Jesus. I'm gonna clean up and then I'll see you in a bit. Okay, I'll be honest, I didn't do the best job of cleaning up, but I chopped off the end of one of the ties that's already on the dress and I'm gonna use that as this part. It's gonna hold my cape over my neck. Could just machine stitch it, couldn't I? I'm already sitting here though. I realized we hadn't seen Alf in a while. There he is. What a good boy. So yeah, that's, that's your Alf update. So here's how it should work, right? This goes under my arms and then this goes over my head. Excellent. Oh, I'm trapped. This has been a very weird short day. It's fine. I'll see you tomorrow and um, hopefully it'll be a bit more productive. Okay, bye. Good morning, lovely people. Welcome. I have decided that today is the last day. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make just some wraps to go around my elbows to attach the cape to my arms so we can get some nice poses. And we're going to make the staff. I found a saw, so let's hope this works. Let's finish this. It was time to make more of those ties and I decided to do a little test of my new method to see if it was better to press a fold halfway along the strip or a third. Or is it a quarter actually? I don't know now. Okay, but one results in one fold while sewing and the other needs two. Or is it two and three? Oh my God, why am I even talking about this? It just like, it wants to roll up. It's so good. Yeah, this way it has two moving parts. Look, all I know is that the halfway fold was harder. That's it. Well. That settles it. Center fold one results in it being a little bit bleh. We got some little like puckering and stuff. It's kind of twisted it a little bit. It was much harder to fold. One third fold. That's how we do it, all right? Remember that, me. I'm gonna see if I can just shove them into this without having to like cut or do anything to the cape because I kind of also want it to work just like down if I want, you know? Oh, it feels so fancy. Oh no, how do I do this? <laughs> how do you tie this on yourself? Oh, oh I'm gonna trip on this. Wrap it just through there. It works. It works. Oh, oh, oh. That'll do. Oh, yes. Yes. So easy. Ah, oh, man, I love taking the easy way out on stuff. I'm really, really enjoying this. It's, this might be my new thing. Let's go make a staff. Ooh, should I make some foot wraps? Should I make some wraps for my feet that you probably won't see? Maybe. Are you ready? <gasps> Look how big this stick is. I um, definitely hit the roof bringing this through the house. Isn't this just perfect for a staff? It's just way too tall at the moment. So, also I'm sorry if this is like massively blown out. Um, this is as low as my ISO will go. So I don't know how to fix this. I can see that my face is in full sunlight. I'm gonna look terrible, but let's just do it. Shouldn't it get into like a rhythm or something? Yeah. I mean, does it matter that this is super rusty and, and old? Oh God, I am getting warm. There are bull ants here. Ugh. I was at this for so long and it didn't get any easier at any point. I thought I had cut into it enough that it just needed to snap, so. No, I broke it. Yeah, it snapped in the wrong place. Luckily I found a really similar stick in our backyard, so it was straight back to it. Although this time I called in a reinforcement and Thomas was able to snap it properly, so that's nice. But then a bunch of bugs fell out of it. Whoa! And I realized that under the bark was a ton of different bugs and spiders and there was no way I was holding onto that, let alone putting it in my car to go to the reveal. So I had to strip all of that bark off. This took so long. I will say though, it really made me wish I had a cool aesthetic knife to do this with, you know? Oh, here's a shot of one of the bugs. Yay. Once I had stripped all that down, then I needed to sand it. And I hate sandpaper. I hate it so much. I cannot tell you how much that is not how I anticipated today going. Let's get to decorating. I cannot figure out how to position this stick. More spider webs. No, we cleared all of it out. Excuse me. 
Oh, okay, I might do it the other way and we're gonna prop it up on my iron. Ah, what was that? Was that spider webs? Ah, something fell on me, did it go down my top? Oh, it was some of my moss, we're okay. There we go, all right. That's the system. We've got our fabric for wrapping around. We've got some twine. I also have some little gold leaves and a star and a moon. This comes with some fake leaves. So I think it might be time to utilize some fake leaves. This comes with florist wire. So I think what we can do is just arrange them and then tie fabric around it. Got some fake ferns, that'll be good. Okay, all right, I'm excited. I'm feeling good about this. Excellent. Okay, so we have our flowers. I'm just realizing now that I didn't explain why I didn't make the pauldrons. I wanted them to be floating and with the cut of this dress, there's just no way to hide how they're attached. And also the photo shoot is going to be hard enough with twig fingers and a blindfold without adding in spiky pauldrons getting stuck in my voluminous hair. Um, hmm. Oh yeah, I wanted some jingly janglies on the star. So I made a plait with jute wine Wine, oh, yummy. With jute twine and strips of fabric. It got tangled a lot. Other than that, this came together so easily, which I really needed after that whole ordeal with the stick this morning. I think our look is complete. I'm just like smushing my face while I do that. Do you know that most of the time when I turn this camera on, I have no idea what I'm about to say. Like I'm as surprised as you with what comes out of my mouth because I am not a professional. I am so excited to put the entire thing on. I haven't seen it on me yet. I think it's gonna be fun. I will see you for the reveal. Bye! going do you need help ash <laughs> independent witch woman so many bugs <laughs> holy shit you put one of these in your mouth <laughs> oh my god no <laughs> 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 if you're angry at the sun <laughs> i look directly at it why